Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, and it is the last Thursday of the month. And as anyone who's tuned in for the last few months, you know, we have our entertainment pundit back, Michael Nichols Pate. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Ah, we have a lot to digest. There has been a lot going on in the history, uh, the, the, the history, the world of entertainment. But we need to start with the biggest news, the biggest. Uh, I not, I wouldn't say pressing news, but it is the most uh, urgent news that has come out of the world of Hollywood in the last week. And that is the shooting of a cinematographer and director on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie, Rust, if I'm not mistaken, yes. is the name. Um, first off, my heart goes out to the person who's lost a loved one, the family, the uh, friends, the people who knew the cinematographer, but also hopefully for a speedy recovery for the director of this movie. Uh, I, any shooting is bad, accidental or intentional, they are bad. I, I don't know how to, I, I, I've been trying to figure out words to, to say when I was talking about this today. And all I can say is, is it time to give up guns in movies? So I don't blame Alec Baldwin as an actor for this shooting. I do blame Alec Baldwin as the executive producer hiring non-union people and forcing this at an unrealistic and unreasonable timeline for this shooting. And he is the executive producer, so he does have blame. Not for necessarily firing the gun, but for the gun being fired. I also don't necessarily have an issue with guns being in movies, but why are we still using blanks when we can just as easily edit it in post? And we I say that as, an, as I say that as non a non editing person, I, an editing person might write me and be like, "You're an idiot." Like it actually is a lot of work, but like we're still using blanks when editing can fix that. Like this is this is a problem. This is happening. This is not the first time this has happened on a movie set, and it it's fully the executive producer's fault. They're running 15 hour workdays. Something got missed because non-union people, 15 hour workdays while people are, while the union is basically on strike right now. Um, I get they wanna make this movie, but they needed safety procedures in place. And it's very unfortunate and it's tragic that this poor man has lost his life. Poor woman, isn't it? Woman, it was, a. I did not catch the gender. I was just- It was a woman. It was the cinematographer was a woman and the director was a woman as well. So- these two um, poor women now have lost their well one has lost their life one is in critical condition because of this guy uh from what i understand and this was just news on monday morning when i was just doing research before we uh taped this episode was uh it the uh report was that he was testing taking out the gun and getting ready for the, uh, the not, I shouldn't say shot, but for the, the film, the filming pr to proceed. And it did go off unexpectedly. The question I have to ask, and this is a question that I don't think you would know or I would be able to answer is, why are we using live ammunition in a prop gun? Well, they've always used blanks, shooting blanks. But from what I understand, it wasn't a blank. Yeah. Now I'm more confused. I don't know why we're using live ammunition. This feels very like unnecessary. I mean, I don't know. I could be I'm wrong. Just... And I, please, please uh, do not hold me to what I'm saying. But I do want to say it was a tragedy of what happened to both the cinematographer and the director. Uh, literally about 24 hours prior to this accident, Jansen Eccles, the uh, one of the brothers off of Supernatural, was stayed, slated to appear in this movie. So I can imagine this movie now, is now being shelved for a while, if not forever. But yeah. as Hollywood goes, we all remember what happened when Crow happened. Uh, Brandon Lee died during filming and they still released it to box office failure. But uh, I just, I am saddened that someone had to die because 
the proper safety measures weren't in place. <sighs> I, we we just really started off on like a really negative, bad, like sad tone, didn't we? Sure did. This Yay. is your journey. You're this is your journey. You're driving the car, so <laughs> I'm driving the car, and of course, as Ak would say, Aqua would say, "Come on, Ken, let's go, Barbie." <laughs> perfect segue if you ask me that was a rough segue but i guess we'll go with it uh it came out earlier today this week is uh last week actually that uh canadian superstar of the notebook mr ryan gosling will be cast as the ken to margot robbie's barbie in the upcoming barbie biopic perfect <sighs> Of course you would say that. It's perfect casting because he's pretty and dumb. And that's all you need from Ken. And I said what I said. (laughs) Wow. For the hate mail that's about to come in. (laughs) No, I like Ryan Gosling. I'm not, I'm just saying. You just called him dumb. You just called him dumb. (laughs) The plenty of people I like are dumb. It's not shade. It's just, it's not. Not a joke, just a fact. True that. Um, I, I, I'm i always concerned when Hollywood runs out of ideas and they start making biopics on TV show or on uh, like uh, dolls. I don't know. I'm kind of here for it. I'm kind of here. Really? Barbie as a cultural, like uh, Barbie in general, like as a cultural movement, as an icon, as like she majorly in fashion, like the fashion world knows and utilizes Barbie to like push designers and push ideas. And Barbie has been around for decades and is a huge staple in like across the globe. Like she is a global phenomenon. I think like a biopic of Barbie, whatever it ends up being is a brilliant idea. And I think that's where I'm concerned because I don't know where they're going with this, right? Like, is it true? Is it like, is it like, hey, here's the doll and here's the story of it and the dolls are real and it's Ken and Barbie? Or is it based on two people who like sort of were the references for Barbie and Ken? That's what I want to know because if it's the first, if it's the first, I'm not going to like it. If it's the second, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> You're not gonna like it, regardless. I think. But... Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, you're right. I'm not. I'm not trying to show throw shade at Margot Robbie, but stick to Harley Quinn. That's all you're good for. Um, she was a great Tanya. Yeah, she didn't win the Oscar. She didn't win the Oscar because yeah. Frances McDormand won the Oscar rightfully. Exactly, Frances McDormand. That didn't make it a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. you're hateful. You come. You're choosing violence this morning, or this afternoon, <laughs> or whatever time of day it is. It is airing in the morning, so totally in the morning. <laughs> so it's the morning. So you're choosing violence this morning because I enjoy it. Because that's what entertainment is about. It's about the expression of how much you hate things and you can get away with it as long as you say it's under the guise of journalism or opinions or if you just say it real bitchy and catty i've learned from the best michael oh thanks (laughs) um Um. wow I, I, I don't know where to go. This, this we have literally 15 minutes into this interview, and usually I've gotten a rapport going. I'm good. We are so out of whack right now. It's awesome. It's a journey. Um, so there have like this month th- seemed to have been uh packed with movie announcements, but also potential movie announcements. And the next area that I want to talk about is the fans calling for a Robin Williams biopic after leaked footage, a.k.a. the Deadpool method, leaked footage of a, I don't know the gentleman's name, I do apologize right now, but an actor portraying the late uh, Robin Williams as uh, during his Mork and Mindy phase and people were gooped gagged god and balked and chalked uh, all about it 
Um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I liked it. <clears throat> do not hold judge. Do not judge me. Do no judgment. Not. I feel judged right now. No judgment. I liked no it. No judgment. With I, 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 yeah, sip your tea. I enjoyed it. I liked it. You didn't because the look that you did not see if you're listening to this via audio, um, the eye roll could have been seen by people in the International Space Station. That's how bad it was. So, Why don't you think this is a good idea? I think, you know, it's too early, I think, for one. Like, I think not enough time has passed that it's not going to be as unbiased as it should. Like, I'm not saying like, uh, like I'm not saying I know any inside information. I don't know any, cause I don't, but like, I'm sure he was not a hundred percent perfect. And a lot of times you need biopics so soon after when there's still that like, oh my God, we miss him, we miss him, we miss him factor. You leave out a lot of the stuff, which is why later on when they redo a story, it puts a lot more of that, like the not so great stuff behind the scenes. And I'm not saying that there isn't. And I'm not saying that he isn't 100% a perfect human being. He might be, I, he might've been, I don't know. But I think it's just too early for us to kind of create an unbiased look, which is why a lot of biopics you see kind of coming out now, like the Aretha Franklin one, they waited for her to die. And before really kind of moving forward with it because you Robin can't. Williams has been dead for five years. I know, but like, I don't know. I, it, to me, it feels too soon. To me, honestly, the Aretha Franklin one feels a little too soon. I think if she hadn't okay. said, I want Jennifer Hudson to be me, I don't know if I would be as comfortable with it. Because I think, and I've seen biopics when people are involved. Motown the Musical is essentially a stage biopic of Barry Gordy. Um, and it's basically, a, we love Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy made music happen by going to the radios and being like, please play my songs. Not the fact that he went to the radio stations and paid them thousands of dollars to pay his, play his songs and did a lot of really underhanded, dirty things and like screwed a lot of his artists over. Like you're not getting a true, true story. And I think that's not enough time has passed to get like that true, true story of Robin Williams. And again, we could 20 years from now get that movie and it's, the and it's the accurate story and it's he's still a perfect wonderful soul and it, that's totally perfect like i just think it's not enough time to pass and to each their own right uh yeah. I, I i i traditionally i agree with you that sometimes you have to wait but it has seemed like hollywood seems to rush to production a lot of these biopics and yeah. the one, the the ones that I, the, the one I'm thinking about right now, and it's literally just at the top of my head because you you literally live in New York, so that's why it's at the top of my head. Which was the World Trade Centers with Nicolas Cage. Like it had been about nine years since the World Trade Centers had been attacked and fell, and um, Oliver Stone and all his pro propaganda uh, rhetoric that he does came full full bore. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to star Nicolas Cage in a movie about the World Trade Centers. And people were still struggling. People were still fighting Congress to get actual uh, health care benefits for those firefighters. And here, here's Oliver Stone doing what he does best. And that's just seizing on an opportunity. So I agree with you. Sometimes it is too soon. I think it's a good idea that they do go ahead with a biopic with Robin Williams because he is a well-respected person. He did have his faults. He did have his struggles. And he's oh, he, he was open about that in his books that he wrote. But I think you are right. It may be too soon. Maybe in five more years, 10 years, let 10 year anniversary, let's do it. But not so soon. And I, I can't believe we're actually agreeing. After the third thing, we've actually agreed upon something. Maybe there is hope for our friendship, Michael. <laughs> oh my God. You're so dramatic. I try. Okay. Like you ha- you have no idea how much how much struggle it is to do a podcast with you every month. Wow. This is some <laughs> abuse. I'm being abused so early. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, was there any other movie news that came out from your perspective before we start talking about some of the big, the big 
the big winners and losers of October when it comes to movie releases? Um, none that I can think of. I'm just very excited to talk about some of the movies that I watched. Let's talk about that. So if you remember back to September when we did our uh, What's Coming Up, there were a few movies that people were looking forward to. And one of them was Halloween Kills. The uh, Michael Myers, have you seen it? No, I, I was going to watch it this weekend. But as you know, I went on a little road trip moment. And so I came back and it was, okay, what do we watch? And my husband's like, I don't think I want to watch Halloween Kills. And I'm like, okay, what do we want to watch? And so we watched another thing. And then this morning I watched a different thing. So I am planning on watching it, I think, on Halloween the day. Because it just feels we're like doing as well. the perfect time to watch my gorgeous, wonderful Jamie. Jamie Lee Curtis doing what she does best. Um, but there was the big one. If you listened last month, a lot of people were excited about the readaptation of the book Dune after it flopped in the 1980s. People were excited. They thought this is a good director. It had somewhat of a good cast, but um, how do I say this nicely? Dune was a dud. I disagree. We had one moment of actual liking each other in this episode. We're gonna end, we're gonna we're gonna end liking each other. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully, okay. Oh no, we will. Um, I already know what we're ending on. We will end happy. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> um, I like. I don't. I never read the book. So if you're a book reader, uh, okay, you can have a completely different opinion. I'm not gonna fight anybody because I didn't read the book. I never watched the 1984 movie. I loved the special effects. I thought the casting was amazing. Despite the fact that Timothy Chalamet whispers in every movie he's in, I don't get the appeal of Timothy. I don't, and I'll say it, and I'll shout it. I don't get the appeal of him. He whispers. Also, why are we still naming our children Paul in 10491? Like, that was like, I just kept saying, why is his name Paul and not like Z-Lock or something like that? Like, I feel like... Elon Musk tried it and it did not go over. (laughs) Yes, well, that's... Elon Musk and Brian, but like, still, like, I, I, I just don't understand. I don't, but I liked it. The special effects were amazing. The Did costumes you? were amazing. I really, I, okay. The story was confusing to me. I like, didn't know what I was watching 90% of it. I need to rewatch it two or three more times, but they're also, I think it's smart that they said they wanted to split it into two, possibly three movies. Cause from what I've read, cause again, I've not seen the first or the 1984 version. The first, the reason it, flop was because they tried to fit 800 pages in like a two hour movie. So they said either it's going to be too long a movie to fit everything in one movie or not enough content. We're going to have to cut too much. So to me, I'm like, I I respect that. I'd rather have like a Hobbit-esque trilogy as long as they tell it well. And personally, as someone who's never read the book, never seen any of the original content of Dune, I'm intrigued. I'm loving it. I'm feeling it. I'm here for Zendaya. Zendaya can do no wrong in my eyes. She said eight things in that whole movie, half of which were Paul, just whispering his name to him. And I was here uh, for it. I, 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 I'm an originalist, right? I, I, I am a book lover. I'm a bookie. I enjoy You're a books. bookie. I'm we can a bookie. Put, we can, we can put bets with you. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> bet what political party is going to win. That's the best bookie I'm ever going to do. Um, <laughs> I, I enjoy books over movies at the end of the day because I hate watching a movie and then reading a book or reading a book based on the movie or vice versa because I, I go in expecting something and I know I shouldn't and I shouldn't do that because it's probably the worst thing you could do. But I went into this movie with semi-high hopes. 15 minutes into it, I was done. I couldn't deal with it. I... I I don't know what didn't grasp me. It Maybe it was just the acting, the bad acting from some people. I just did not like it. I wanted every single one of those outfits when they walked, when they rolled in with those like white, like floor length Lil Nas X style robes needed it. Maybe that's and what then, it was. Maybe that's what it was. I was thinking too much of gay C-3PO. 
And then the woman with the, the like nun hat, except it was like 800 feet tall above her head, obsessed me 12 of those in every color. Um, I, listen, it was a fun time. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. I, again, know anything else. So if you don't have any background, you're going to love it. <laughs> exactly, right? Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you're more like Michael. Maybe you like going into movies, not knowing backstory and actually what the movie's based on. And that's okay. I do not hold a grudge against anyone who does that. For me, when I go in, I, I, I'm an originalist. I want to see the movie based on the book, not the movie, the movie based on the book's interpretation by the director and screenwriter. And that's what I felt like I got. So this is my thing. I have found that if I read the book and then watch the movie, I hate the movie. But if I watch the movie and then read the book, I like both the book and the movie. Like I love the Jurassic Park movies. I read the books after and I love the Jurassic Park books, but I had nostalgic emotional attachment to the movies before I had it to the books. And the book is probably my favorite. Jurassic Park is probably one of my favorite books, but it has that, and I can kind of separate the two as like, but with Harry Potter, I read the books first and then watched the movies. I think some of those Harry Potter movies are some of the worst film adaptations that are out there. Especially Despite the first the, two. Except for the, no, the first two are the only ones that are like as pure really? as the books as you're going to get. The only ones. The third one's awful. The third one doesn't even finish it. The fourth one, they just decided, oh, this is too many pages. Let's cut specific points out. Like I remember reading that book going, I just want to see this Sphinx in this riddle moment. And you lost all of that. And like, I, I just feel like as the movies went on, the director took their own, like, well, we can cut this storyline out because it doesn't matter and cut this out. And then the seventh book came out and like Dobby all of a sudden had to be a major player and he was in every book, except it's like, what do we do? We cut Dobby's entire storyline out and now we're fucked in the seventh book or seventh movie. And so they had to like pigeonhole it in. I'm very passionate about movies if I read the book first. So I try not to. I think the fourth Harry Potter movie screwed up royally. That, that movie should have been at least two movies, a part one and part two. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. I, I think honestly, once you get to the fourth movie, they each should have been two. Yeah. And I think the third movie, instead of trying to pigeonhole it in the time frame that they filmed it, they should have done a two and a half, three hour movie for it. So I'm just missed gonna, parts. I'm just gonna break in here for a second because some news just came across my desk from uh, a, a, literally a topic we started off with, which was the movie Rust with Alec Baldwin, where the shooting happened. Um, it is now confirmed that the assistant director on the movie Rust, which was the Alec Baldwin movie, who handed the prop gun to Alec Baldwin before the fatal shooting last week was previously fired from another film production that had a gun incident on that film production as well. Uh, the assistant director on the film Freedom's Path in 2019 uh, was fired because a unexpectedly discharged gun happened on set causing a sound crew member to record Coil Halting Production and the production company uh, Rocket Soul Studios has confirmed this. So there was sabotage. Yeah. This is the great thing about doing these interviews. We get to have breaking news from time to time. Um, I, I, don't, I just wanted to make sure that we talked about that because we did talk about uh, who was responsible. And I know you said as the executive director for Alec Baldwin, he is still responsible for hiring someone like this. But like, this is like, why would you like this person? Where was the background check on this person? Like clearly yeah. this is a, now this is a common thread. Like, yeah. you know nope. what? Ooh. I, <laughs> I feel like we could spend a whole hour just on this topic, but uh, let's Throw get back something. to let let's go back to movies because that yes. that, that, that cheers us up that, that always cheers that us always people. cheers me up. So let's talk about some of the movies you saw this month besides Dune the Dud. I like Dune, so I guess we'll have to agree to disagree on that. Um, it's I, what our friendship is built on. 
I took the bullet for everyone this month, twice, potentially three times, depending. Cause I only watched four things, Dune and three movie, two to three movies that people are gonna be like, why? So Dear Evan Hansen, Muppets Haunted Mansion, and, and this is where you are gonna roll your eyes at me, Diana the Musical. Okay. I took the bullet so that I could properly come back and let you all know about these three movies. Okay, so let's let's digest because I saw two out of those four movies. Well, two and like point five, two point two point like two five movies out of the four that you just mentioned. So let's start with the one I didn't see. Diana let's talk musical. about Diana the musical because I saw that before we got rid of Netflix and I went, what? You actually watched it? I, you know, when they show the trailer for it, when you scroll over, that's where I got to and I went, nope. Okay. This movie, well, it's not a movie, it's a musical. They filmed the production of Broadway. So, it is so basically, Broadway- it's like come from a way that Apple uh, Apple yes. did. It's Hamilton for Disney Plus. It's yes. next Netflix version of let's see if we could get into the Broadway game, which did not end well. Well, okay. The entire okay. So ooh, how do I talk about this? Um, it was camp. <laughs> like the whole thing, like the entire thing was just like, what they're really like. Like we all remember that that the black dress Diana wore when she went out partying while Charles was telling his sordid tale of cheating with Camilla on Princess Di. So they re- literally wrote a song called "The Fuck You Dress," and they sang for four minutes about her putting on this "fuck you" dress and going and partying on the town while Charles is spilling his little like I cheated story, and it just like that was like the most grounded moment in the show everything else was like that over was the, the most t- that was the most there was lit t- there was literally a boxing match song between camilla and diana where they made a boxing arena and they like sang verbally at each other like a boxing ring about how who was going to win charles very a la the boy is mine monica and brandy except it was like this is a lot um <laughs> The casting was perfect. The costumes were perfect. The, and like everyone was like cartoon versions of themselves. Like Diana was like the Disney princess. Charles was like the philandering evil, like cartoonish caricature. The queen was like a cartoon. Like everyone was like over the top versions. It was fully campy. And then Everyone knows, spoiler alert, if you don't know, Princess Diana dies in a car crash. Whoa. <laughs> I know. Well, gra- shocking. If you don't know, I don't know how you 1997 called, and they want their money back. Um, so, like, the whole time, like, it ends, and you think it's going to end with, like, well, you know it's not going to end with her getting the divorce. But, like, the last five minutes, the queen agrees to give her the divorce, and then she's, like, out, and it's all the headlines of, like, Diana's, donating money to here and donating money to here and saving AIDS patients. Um, oh, which there is also a scene where she asks to take photos with AIDS patients and the, AIDS, the patients say, I have AIDS, but I look good today. I guess I'll be in a picture and I'm like, what, what am I watching? Um, <laughs> this is the and, one of time when you're watching a train wreck before it happens and you're still trying to figure out why you're watching it because you know how gruesome it's about to happen. It was amazing. Um, and then uh, and so he is she, crying she, right now, guys. For those who are watching by uh, or are listening to this, he is crying about this movie. So she like gets the divorce, her and the queen hug, and she's like, You never liked me. And the queen's like, No, <laughs> like, okay. And then so she goes on her like, I'm donating trail, and then all of a sudden, like, all the like fun music and the lights and the disco all stop, and it's like breaking news, breaking news. And like all the like chorus members kind of become reporters and like flip around and do like breaking news moments, like releasing all the information as it was coming out. And then it's like, Princess Diana, breaking news, Princess Diana is dead. Like full black stage, spotlight on her. She turns around because she was like looking at things and 
turns around, faces the audience, turns back around, walks to the back of the stage, the spotlight goes out and it's just flashing cameras as like the thing closes on her. And it was like the most sobering, like this was a good time. And y'all like punched us in the face at the end, which is exactly what I wanted. But then they ruined it by the last 30 seconds doing like a little song and dance moment. I mean, even the reporters had like these long trench coats that they were like flipping around. It was really cool choreo. It was such a train wreck. It was like watching The Room with Tommy Wiseau. It was so bad, you couldn't look away. It was so enjoyable. I have not had so much fun watching something that is so insanely bad. And it's going to win Tony for costumes because those costumes were like cookie cutter replicas of the costumes she wore. So for those who costumes. for those who don't know though, for those who did not tune into our September uh, entertainment rundown, this this play was supposed to be on Broadway during the pandemic. The pandemic happened. They complete it completely fucked over Broadway. So the producers, I'm assuming, went to Netflix and say, hey, can we do a trial run, sort of the off-Broadway show of this to see how well it's going to receive? And hey, it could go for an Emmy, Tony, Grammy, the whole kit caboodle. <laughs> I genuinely do not want that for this. I think it's just going to win costumes. You may see Princess Diana get nominated, but the actress playing her get nominated, but that's probably it. It's going to get costumes, nomination, and maybe choreo. The rest that's of it was not all that score. Special. No, it's not. I can assure you it will not be getting that. Some of these, it was also almost entirely sung through. It was wild. I would, as someone who like, because you like the British royal family, I'd highly recommend you watch it. It's such a train wreck. It's just, it's so bad. It's wonderful. So this is a good sort of a segue. We're going to talk about the other three for a second, but I want to talk for a moment about a movie that's coming up in November. Diana, right? Spencer. Kristen? Oh, Spencer, sorry. Spencer. So Prince William, Kate Middleton were at an event uh, over the last week. I think it was this weekend or the past weekend, one or the other. And they said or it might have been someone from the royal family or someone from Diana's family saying they don't like how Diana's being portrayed anymore because you talk about the Robin Williams factor, right? It's too soon. Yes, it's been 23 years since Diana's passing, but people are making jokes out of it now. And that's kind of where this movie, the musical that you were talking about, comes from, right? So, sort of. The musical is more... The reason it's so campy, I think, is because it's supposed to be a metaphor for, like, the media frenzy around surrounding her. Because, like, they kind of talk about her in a negative light. But you also have Americans writing these, these shows, movies, TV shows, things about her. And America loves Diana, like, adores her. And we're not going to talk about the bad things because everyone in America has been Princess Diana forever. Like, yeah. Candle in the Wind, our version is and always will be the Diana version like and that's part of and I get I get that the family being like we don't want more story like stories about how fabulous and amazing and blah 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 she was or how campy or right like and I get that and I can respect that and I, I just I just wanted to put that in there because I think there's there's a point where when is too much enough I think because, this is too much <laughs> well, sounds like it and I didn't even watch yeah. it but we got the movie coming out in November, Spencer. We've got The Crown going into season five, which is going to tackle her death. We got Diana the Musical. Like, at what point in time? We had the Naomi Watts version of Diana. This came out a few years ago. It wasn't just recently. Diana seems like, literally, I, I hate to use this analogy, but you can't beat a dead horse more dead, right? America loves her and there and that's the thing like I think a musical is fairly inevitable especially now that they're writing like musical biopics about everyone whoa, 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 and their whoa, whoa. mother. Is James Corden in it? No. I'll watch it then. <laughs> yeah, I know, shocking. Um yeah, no, Diana no James Corden, so if that's what will draw y'all in, there you go. Um I just think that like I don't know. I I think we are just too obsessed with her in America. I don't really know why. I mean, I like her. She's great. She's fabulous. I miss her every day. Like, as a good American, we should. Um, but it's like, 
do we need more? And I think, and as much as I am looking forward to Kristen Stewart's portrayal in Spencer, I, cause I think she will do a pretty good portrayal. I like Kristen Stewart as an actress. I think she got the raw end of the stick doing those Twilight movies that fucked a lot of her career. Cause she was very good um, in the one movie she did before Twilight, which was this like teen angsty bullying movie. And then the Twilight movies came and those movies were a joke. Well, that plus the studio trying to give her to Robert Patterson, the whole she slept with the director, yeah. came out as lesbian. Like it was a very tough few years for Kristen Stewart during those Twilight movies. And she's um, a great actress, which is it's a shame that that's what people really like remember her for. So I'm excited to see this. Do I have hope that it's going to be amazing? No. We, you and I have very differing tastes and I have learned that. And I accept that about us. This is why we're good friends. Yes. <laughs> because we, we accept our faults in each other. I don't know about faults. I think just different tastes. <laughs> it's not a fault. It's just a different taste. Um, let's go back to the other three movies that you watched. Sure. Let's, just, let's start with Haunted Mansion. The Muppets version of Haunted Mansion. It was fun. I mean, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. This is probably the only one that I would say like I didn't take a bullet for because I love the Muppets. It's just a good time. I don't know if it's like, it's not groundbreaking. It's just- <laughs> It insane. wasn't. It's it was good. It, you know what? Cute. The Muppets needed a Halloween movie. They hadn't done one. They did like, how many have they done for Christmas? How many like have they done about traveling across the country? Like at what point in time do they have to start? Like, I can't wait for like 10 years from now when we get the Thanksgiving one. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's cute. Like, why not? Like, this is a fun family Halloween movie. I watched this with a friend. We both chuckled the entire time. Like it was just like, it was just cute. It was funny. It was not groundbreaking. It was not amazing. It was just fun. Uh, then the one that you and I, I think we'll disagree on. I actually didn't like it. I thought I was I hated to. this. I hated this. I, I thought I went in expecting a good thing because I was a fan of the music because the musicians are really good at some of their songs. Pascal uh, and Paul they, love to write a catchy song. They did Lala, Lala Wood or something Lala Wood. Lala Land. Lala Land. And then they did The Greatest Showman. But the uh, talking about Broadway going to movies, Dear Evan Hansen. I hated it. I don't He's know what it is but I wanted to punch. Evan punch. Hansen? Yeah, the entire time. He gaslit that family he, into getting friends and a girlfriend. He gaslit his school to become popular. He gaslit yeah. his mother constantly. I think, okay, whew, this is my turn for a little rant. I hate Pasek and Paul. They write catchy songs for shitty problematic shows. Prime example, Dogfight the Musical. It is a whole musical about this, these sailors that go into this town find the ugliest girl they can to invite to a dance to then crown the queen of the uglies. Then they go back off to war after this poor girl gets her heart broken thinking she's found this really nice guy. They all die except for the one dude who brought the queen of the uglies, which was this nice girl. He gets brought back to that island or land or whatever. And she is his nurse. They then fall in love and she forgives him and it's happily ever after. Every Pasek and Paul show the male protagonist does something shitty and faces zero consequence for it. Greatest Showman, P.T. Barnum, they first off left out 95% of the shitty stuff F he did. Like the Greatest Showman a wasn't a biopic, let's be honest. It was not a no. biopic at no. all. It was, they left out like owning a slave. He made most of his money initially owning a slave and calling her the oldest woman in the world. Left that part out. And then like when he fucks everyone over to go cheat on his wife and ro roll across the country with the pretty singer and like ditches the people that made him money. And then they come back and he's like, I lost money. They're like, we forgive you. It's like, where's the consequence? Like, this is my issue with Pasek and Paul. Dear Evan Hansen, he faced zero consequence for that. Any other person, if, if that was to happen in reality, that Evan Hansen would have been run out of town canceled like the school like and i like i just i find i flames 
flames on the side of my face, to quote Clue. Um, it, just, it just was so bad. And then like, they cut a lot of the music because I never saw the stage production, but I guess the stage production makes it a little more vague. So it's not as like in your face problematic, but like they cut out a lot of that stuff, like for the moms, like you didn't, like the song you loved, does anybody have a map? Cut it. Like Evan Hansen sang the first three songs to the point where you're like, is this all in his head or not? Like, it just felt so problematic. I, I, I just, it made me angry. And he faced zero consequences. My husband was even like, kid made a stupid mistake. We didn't need two and a half hours of a movie for him to like rectify it, which he barely even did. Yeah. I want to talk about one last thing before we move on from Dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And that is, I get the thrill of a casting 36 year olds as teenagers. I watched The OC, I watched 90210, I watched all these shows. But at what point in time does Ben Platt have to look at himself and say, maybe I'm just a little too old to play Evan Hansen anymore? Because the entire time I was watching this, I was like, is this like, it's something's going to happen where like the cops are going to show up and there's going to be a pedophilia ring running in Evan Hansen's mind. Because he looked, I don't know what how they like aged him or what makeup they put on him. Maybe it wasn't RuPaul's makeup, but holy shit, did he look bad? It just and the, the, also the worst part is when that people are asking him in interviews. He's like, you know, this movie would never have been made without me. Yeah, but not for the reason you think, dude. Like your dad was an executive producer on the musical and the movie. That's why you got cast, not because no one else can do the role because. Jordan Fisher looks the right age, could have done it. Noah Galvin, as much as I want to punch him in his face because he's the worst, looks the part, can sing it, looks the right age. Like there are young looking actors that have done and, the part on Broadway that could have just as easily done it. And literally Noah Galvin is Ben Platt's boyfriend. <laughs> I know. I, like I said, want to punch Noah Galvin in the face. Don't like him. I, I, I am so, uh, how do I say this correctly? Angry that there was so much hype around this Broadway production, so much hype around this movie that when I watched it, I had high expectations and I left that and I was like, nope, nope. I told you I, you weren't going to like it. Y- you did. No, I told but- you, I actually I thought you, I thought I, no, I thought you might like it because you like Pasek and Paul, but. I said right from the jump, I thought it was going to be trash. They cut out my favorite song. <laughs> there you go. Like when, when you expect to open up in a kitchen and it's not, you're like, well, where, where is everyone? Connor, you can't go to school high. Great, then I won't go. Exactly. <laughs> Though I will say the line Caitlin Deaver's character said when the mom was like, oh, uh, how was school or whatever? And she's like, everyone's being really nice and trying to be my friend. And she goes, oh, well, they have good intentions. And she was like, no, they don't. I'm like, as someone who has gone through a loss, like a pretty heavy loss like that and had people out of the nowhere, like I'm going to friend you on Facebook and I'm going to reach out and I'm going to try and insert myself in your life. It's like, this was great. Like I related to that so, that line so hard. Cause it's like, it, yes, no one ever says that in a movie, but like, thank you. That was the only part I can green light. That three That's lines. Um, so we've talked about the movies we've seen this month. Let's talk about the movies that are upcoming for November. And there is a lot. Sure is. I don't know. Like maybe Hollywood's <laughs> at, like not gun shy anymore since Shang-Chi came out. It's Oscar season. This is when Oscar movies start coming out. From now to January, it's going to be a flood. Uh, yes. So let's start with literally, and it seems like they mostly come out in the first few weeks of November as well. So, Thanksgiving. American uh, that's Thanksgiving. Right. That's why, because right. unless you have like a big blockbuster, no one's going to see it in the last week. Yeah. So Eternals, Marvel's Eternals, the run up. Uh, my husband actually saw this trailer and he's like, I want to go see that. I was like, what? 
I had to well, like had to second guess myself because he never wants to go out, but he never also wants to go to the movie theater. So I was like, what the what the fuck is this all about? We're we're going out. You're taking me to a movie. What? <laughs> so Chloe Zhao, the director of Nomadland, she directed this. And so it's not from what I've been what I've read, what I've seen, it's not gonna be like normal Marvel movies because she has those like wide sweeping shots. So I'm very excited for the Eternals. I might be very disappointed, but I'm very excited. I am as well. Um, as we've talked about beforehand, Spencer's coming out, the Diana Kristen Stewart uh, movie. Uh, um, I can't believe I'm actually even saying these words out loud. Hey, Clifford? Clifford the Big Red Dog with I'm Jack excited. Whitehall. I'm excited. I would have never thought to like, let's do this as a movie, but like here for it. Sign me up. I'm ready to see it. Okay. So <laughs> this is probably telling way too much to my audience, but whatever. This is what we do. I, um, I'm a big kid at heart. I watched Pokemon until, well, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Yu-Gi-Oh! I watch Digimon. I watch Arthur on a regular basis until it got canceled. Screw you, PBS, which we have not talked about because I'm still trying to... <sighs> anyway, Arthur... Wasn't, Mr. Friends... Wasn't the teacher gay? We love that. Mr. Mr. Ratburn, yes. <laughs> we love him. I almost called him Mr. Rat again. And I'm like, I don't think that's his name. So I'm just going to call him the teacher. So I'm a big kid at heart. <laughs> I read Clifford the Big Red Dog as a kid because it was it was my generation that it was out. I watched Clifford the Big Red Dog, the TV show Me with too. John Ritter as Clifford the Big Red Dog and Muffy, I think her name was, and I forget the dog the uh, the bulldog little dogs, name. yeah, the bulldog, yeah, I forget them name, but I I watched it so I. I, yet again, I'm an originalist so here. <laughs> this, this is probably going way too far down the rabbit hole right now. But I watched it and I was excited when this concept came out. And then I saw the fucking trailer and I went, what? <laughs> I love that. I want... I, I'm so, I didn't know we were making it. And then I saw the trailer and I'm like, this is going to be so much fun. I love a good fun movie. Like I said, I love the Muppets. I'm not going in expecting like the ground, most groundbreaking movie I've ever made. I just want a good time. And I think Clifford's going to give me that good time. I hope so. I am not going to the movie theaters to watch this because let's be honest, I will look very odd going to a movie theater to watch Clifford the Big Red Dog. But I am I I am holding out hope. I will watch it because I'm a Jack Whitehall fan. I think he's a good actor. He is semi funny on some of the shows that I watch in Inc. Uh, Britain. I <laughs> I'm holding out hope. <laughs> holding out hope i am not even holding out hope i just know it'll be a fun time even if it's bad it's gonna be fun that's true too uh next is uh ryan reynolds dwayne johnson and uh oh my god i can't even remember her name uh wonder woman gal gadot, gal gadot. Gal gadot yeah. in red notice i don't know what that is so this is uh, this was filmed during the pandemic. Literally, it was the concept that Ryan Reynolds came up with with Dwayne Johnson. It the sounds Rock. pretentious. It seems funny. It's by Netflix. Oh, it's going to be Netflix. I'll watch it. <laughs> I'm not going to the theaters to watch this. I'll watch it. That's true. When did it come out? Uh, in the month of uh, November, I think in the first two weeks. Literally, the everything that I've written down comes out with the first two weeks. Cool. Um, Next one I want to talk about is, oh, I can't believe they're even still making these movies, but here we are. Home Sweet Home Alone. The Home Alone franchise has got a new kid and the new kid is the big guy from Jojo Rabbit. Hello, Jojo. <laughs> I love I gotta... him. Um, okay. Wait, my, my guy isn't in it? Macaulay Culkin? 
Mc- well, he might. Let's be honest. Let's uh, if if they gave him enough money, they probably will show up. Macaulay Culkin just, just did that American Horror Story train wreck, which we'll talk about when we get to the television programs. But my, if my boy Macaulay is not in this, I ain't want to see it. And so, that's the facts. Ellie Kemper, who had a bit of a controversy, the Office actress. Um, you mean she is three K Kimmy Schmidt. There you go. Kimmy Schmidt is the wet bandit. She is the bad guy in the movie. Rod, Rob Delaney, who is also a British actor, well, American British actor. He's in it as well. Keenan Thompson is in this. I do like Allison, him. What? I do like him. Yeah. So there, I'm, I like the first one. Second one, eh. The third one with French Stewart, let's be honest, I don't think anyone watched but me. <laughs> it was, I think it's time to hang up the Home Alone series. Well, it's been like a while since they released a new one. Uh, probably a few years. I think early, late 2000s when the last one came out. No, because Home Alone 2 was the last one. Uh, no, there's been five. What? There's been five. No. It got canceled when they put Donald in it. No. See, nope. I'm, I'm, pro- I'm, I'm not going to question Home you on okay. it because you know so Christmas Home movies Alone better than One I do. came out in 1990. Home Alone Two came out in uh, 19 whatever. <clears throat> 97. Home Alone Three came out. Home Alone Four came out in 2002. Home Alone Five came out in 2012. And Home Alone 6, which is this one, comes out in 2021. So it's been almost 10 years. But st- <laughs> the fact that there's six is shocking. Uh-huh. That did just end. So this is going to be the third actor who plays the Kevin role, but not Kevin. If it's not Macaulay. No. <laughs> uh, the one, we'll move on to the next one because I just, I just, I can't believe there's six of them can't believe let's I let's can't. count i'm gooped gag gogged and gawked and chalked and bolt i'm dead <laughs> um i can't believe you haven't wanted to talk about this one yet house of gucci because i know you're not gonna want it you're not gonna like it i'm gonna watch it i know but you're not gonna like it it's gonna break my heart i will give it <laughs> i will i will I will let it flow into me, okay? Are you excited for it? I'm so excited. The casting is brilliant. And we might finally give Gaga a nomination for an Oscar she deserves rather than just, I don't know. I didn't think Star is Born was all that great, but I think she's doing a great job in this from the trailers. I may feel differently once I've seen it. I'm so excited for this, The House of Gucci. I'm ready. I think when it when I first saw the trailer like months ago, I messaged you and like, oh my god, I'm so ready. And you're like, meh. And I'm like, whatever. I, I break my for heart. those who know me will probably go, yeah, that sounds like Chris. <laughs> that sounds like Chris going, meh. Break my heart. I'm like, well, I guess fuck my drag. I will be watching that movie elated. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a Jared Leto fan, so I'm looking forward to seeing him in it. Is it I'm streaming not only, only? Or I mean, is it streaming in theaters or theaters only? I think it's well, let's be honest. I'm Canadian. We don't get what you guys get because you guys are oh, awesome streaming. Experience. Well, which we'll talk about that too. Yeah. So that's gonna be a rant and a half, just myself. Um I'm looking forward to it. I'm giving it because my husband wants to watch it. So you do what your husband wants sometimes. Okay. I know that's why I watch Alabama games. Roll Tide. <laughs> Woo! That's why I watch Judge Judy and Judge Reimer every night before we go to bed. Woo! Baloney. <laughs> Baloney. Um, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Afterlife is coming out, filmed in Calgary, filmed in just south of us. So we have the areas that it was filmed in here. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. Uh, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan, not like some people who dress up on it and 
go to Comic Con dressed up as Ghostbusters. I'm not that type of fan. I'm just like the fan who like likes the movies. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm not a big fan of Paul Rudd. He 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 he's hit and miss for me. I know, I know the everyday man. I just think he's yeah. being used, I think he's being used a lot lately. And I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, Paul Rudd is the new James Corden of any acting ability. Like if you need the everyday man, let's throw Paul, Paul Rudd in there. I want to quote so many clueless quotes at you right now. So many. I've never seen that movie. Oh, I, I know it's with Alicia Silverstone, isn't it? That movie, yes. Okay. That movie is probably in like my top five movies. Hey, your top five movies changes every freaking week. No, 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 no. This is no, no, no. always very close to the top. Okay. I, love, I, I cannot stress recommend highlight watching this it's just fun it's also weird because like it's a little incestuous at the end but like not but like yeah i don't know it's okay whatever it's the 90s it was okay then you could date your stepbrother (laughs) oh good it's all good it's all good um and then the last movie I want to talk about, and this is Benedict Cumberbatch's Oscar-worthy performance. I think he's going to be nominated and possibly win, depending on how Tom Hanks does in Finch, which I don't think is good. He'll get nominated, Tom Hanks. Let's be honest, he gets that nominated. That movie looks awful. If he, I'm sorry. Every he Greyhound was awful, and well, he was still nominated. He's going to get nominated because he's Tom Hanks, just like Meryl Streep shits on in the movie, and they give her an Oscar nomination. August St. Orange or August Orange County? August or Orange Saint County. Brilliant movie. Bad acting from everyone but Meryl Streep. Well, Meryl won it. Or did she? She won for that, no, right? No. She Still got nominated. nominated. So, The Power of Dog. This is uh, independent film coming out in the theaters in November. It has Oscars written all over it. The issue is... Yeah. This is a call me by your name scenario. Do you know about the movie? Call me by your name? No, Power of Dog. I think so. So what happens is Benedict Cumberbatch plays a rancher in the, I think, 1800s, like like, like the cusp of the 19th century, let's say. Mm-hmm. And his, I think, sister-in-law or like, friend from his past comes back with his her husband and her child and he has a a thing for the son who is underage and it's about their relationship and what he does to get him because he's coming to terms with his own sexuality during the movie oh i'm gonna hate it i think i am too but Oscars seem to love that type of shit. So, and they like anything British. So they'll probably give it to Benedict Cumberbatch trying to do an American accent, a Montana American accent to boot. Um, So I think we might see a nightmare alley. It's coming in December. We'll talk about that in the next podcast, but I think Guillermo Guillermo del Toro does very well with these award shows. And I think that movie does well directing and acting directing and uh, uh film he doesn't do well for actors who like well this cast is an all-star cast i think we'll talk about it that's a we get that's that's, that's december this, show. that's december that's, 17th so that's december show so uh, the one area that i want to talk about last unless there's movies that you want to talk about nope the one area i want to talk about before we move on to tv shows and tv streaming is dc fandom DC Mm. fandom came out this month, uh, much anticipated uh, trailer for the upcoming 2022, the Batman with Robert Patterson came out Uh, the much anticipated 2022, the flash with Ezra Miller came out. And as a comic book fan, 
as a comic book guy, I was disappointed. With I which? wasn't up both. I haven't seen the I, trailers. I just I was really liking Robert Pattinson as everyone's like, he's going to ruin it. Because they were, they were like putting on Twitter, you're going to ruin it. And then he responded and went, yeah, keep it up and I will. <laughs> so he's like, I'll, I'll intentionally sabotage it if you keep saying that. And I'm like, you know what? I can respect a good troll. I, but let's be honest. They say that about every time someone changes. They said that about Daniel Craig when he took over from Pierce Brosnan over uh, 007, James Bond. They said that about Christian Bale when they took over from, well, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, uh, Batman. So I, I, I hold no uh, credence of respect to anyone who says he's going to ruin it before he sees it. I just don't like the way that it looks. That's all I'm saying. That's me. Me being me. Okay. I mean, I think the Batman story is just overplayed. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. Whole fucking heartedly. <laughs> let's talk about streaming yes 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 let's, let's talk about streaming and the biggest news to come out of streaming was dave Chappelle. pass uh so we canceled our net netflix subscription <laughs> and by that i found out that by we canceling it i mean my husband now no longer pays for it, but we still have it because we just now use our family's Netflix account. Yeah. So we no longer pay for Netflix. That's how I can say it. Um, did you watch it? Did you watch the stand-up comedy show? I do not need to watch the Dave Chappelle comedy special to know the jokes he made. Yeah. Because he's been making the same jokes since the Chappelle show. And this is my big thing. And actually this can segue after Chappelle into one of the shows upcoming that I don't know if you saw. I don't think Chappelle works anymore in this modern time. I think his jokes haven't evolved to where society's evolved. Like I love a good gay joke. I, I love a good joke about trans, like I love a good joke about the queer community, period. But tell funny ones. These weren't funny. These are just punching down. And it's like, if you told like a couple, it'd be like, okay, whatever. But like every comedy special, it's punching down. This was like, what, an hour, 20 minute special and 37 minutes were devoted to talking about how trans women weren't women and how gay people are the worst. And like, dude, like get new material. It just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Like you and... were kind of funny in the early 2000s, but just dude. The, the big issue that I took away from this whole thing was the whole Netflix standing by him after uh, workers came out and said, this is bad and they got yeah. fired. That's the, that's the issue that Which is I super have. problematic. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I agree freedom of speech is a thing that people believe in. I might not agree with it, but it is a thing that people agree with. But if you stand up and you talk about something you disagree with, you should not be fired for that. And Netflix had to do a about phase. Oh, sorry, we were not firing you anymore. And it just looked bad on Netflix's part. So there's our rant about Dave Chappelle in about 30 to 45 seconds. I just think there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom of consequence. You can have freedom of speech, say whatever the hell you want, but that doesn't mean you're free of consequence. Like, and that consequence might be people don't want to listen to Chappelle. And even it's like, you know, people are just going to cancel me after this. And there's reports that have come out that, that were from people in the audience that said no one was laughing. And so that the laughter you're hearing on it is actually a canned like laughter. Cause, which I would believe that Netflix would do something like that. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. Wash we're done my with hands of it. Understandable. But, while we're still on the does this work in 2021, History of the World Part 2 as a TV series. Mel Brooks. Have you seen this? What? Yes, they're doing a TV series called History of the World Part 2. And it's Mel Brooks, like still involved with it. Really? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Is this going to work in 2021? I do not think so. 
I don't either. I am shocked. I know. I'm shocked at this. I, listen, I'm, I love History of the World Part 1. I love uh, okay. Frankenstein. But, like, is this going to work? Like, So this, oh, now you've got me on a tangent here. And now I'm going to be thinking it. about a few things. So Mel Brooks is good about playing to the times, right? Because... I think you have to look at his one, one of his most famous uh, productions, The Producers, right? Like literally The Producers is what is happening in today's society. We have producers who just want to make money. So they're willing to put out the stupidest, most idiotic stuff, springtime for Hitler. Well, they didn't, they wanted it to flop because then they didn't have to report their taxes. Well, it, okay, we can we can talk about that later, but producers don't care anymore. They're like, okay, oh, no. we're going to make money by just putting out shit after shit after shit. I think Mel Brooks is a hilarious guy. Uh, Blazing Saddles, Baseballs, you name it. I know, Yet again, if you want to write into the show, write into the show. I understand that it's a controversy. Uh, Blazing Saddles, and then... Um, Robin Hood Men in Tights, you name it, Mel Brooks has done great work. He's done great work. If some of them just have jokes that really don't, that at the time, perfect. Now, <laughs> don't fly. That's where I'm worried. You can I say think, that about 10 years ago as well, though, right? Sure. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's, because like I said, I think he is very good at making some, he's some, some great movies. Like I love Young Frankenstein and I'll keep saying it. it's such a great movie. I, I'm hoping, I hope, I'm really excited for this. Yeah. Is this gonna be another Chappelle situation? I don't know. Will I be along for this ride? Sure. <laughs> sure, sure, it's all good, it's all good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna do some research after the show airs and try to figure out uh, what this is all about because I'm actually looking forward to it because I'm a Mel Brooks fan as well. So, oh my God, we, we agree on stuff. Remember I back s- an hour and a half ago when we <laughs> hated each other? We're about to not like each other. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. Um, no, so TV shows, where do we want to talk so, about? Uh, before we talk about what happened, I want to, before we talk about the shows that we watched this month, I have one last thing we want to talk about. Yes. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I think I do, but I forgot. It is on the realm of DC Comics still. It is Miss Ruby Rose, the original Batwoman. Um, If you have not been paying attention, Batwoman is now in season three. Season three. Uh, Season one started off with Ruby Rose being uh, cast as Katie Kane, if I'm Kathy Kane? Kate Kane. Kane. Kate Kane. And uh, after one season, Ruby Rose picked up and said, nope, don't want to do it anymore. I'm moving on. I don't want to do it anymore. They hired a new actress. I don't know her name. I apologize right now. And two seasons later, we are on the cusp of uh, Batwoman being done because I think it actually has been canceled or it has been told you have three seasons and that's it. Oh yeah, that woman's getting done here. Oh, we're getting real time fact checking here, guys. Fact checking. Um, as of right now, it has not been canceled or renewed for a fourth season. Okay, so I do. It's apologize. on the cusp. On the cusp. So, as of right now, it is looking uh, like the DC World at WB or CW or whatever you want to call it is coming to a close because they're moving over to HBO Max. But earlier this month or late this month in October, Ruby Rose came out and said, I left because I was treated unfairly and people were angry and they weren't treating me right, which CW said, uh uh-uh. uh, no, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> Ruby Rose has a reputation. That's the word I want to use. (laughs) Of conflating issues that aren't there. And of being difficult to work with. That's the other thing as well. 
Were you shocked about this this back and no, forth I CW knew, and Greg Belanti and I knew the minute I saw she was cast, I said she's not going to last because there's a reason her character basically got written off of Orange Is the New Black. I knew she was not going to stay. She was not going to want to do it because it's demanding. Like it is a demanding schedule, and I mean, I'm sure there's some truth to what she was saying with them wanting to rush back. But like at the same time, I think there's also some, like you said, conflating some left out parts that on her where she wasn't doing things right. Like I, I've not seen this new, C- I, I love all the CW shows. I watch 90% of the shows I watch are CW. And I hate to say that because they're not great shows, but I watch most of them and I enjoy every second of it. Um, you watch the CW, I'll watch old reruns of Pokemon. It's okay. It's okay. But I, I think, I, eh, does not shock me. What? I feel attacked. I thought no we were attacked. Along. I love Pokemon. You know I love Pokemon. No, no. Anyway, continue on about Ruby <laughs> Rose before we move on. Before, yeah, before I, anger comes out and I start talking about Pikachu and Charmander. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that, I think that the new, because I watched a, few episodes or one or two episodes of the new season with the new girl and I think she's great I just it was around the time I was moving and I was busy with work and then I didn't have a tv so I've not seen like any of this season two and I know season three is either here or right around the corner I mean I I think she's great I, I'm curious to actually sit down and physically watch it because I do think Ruby Rose was the weakest part of that show because Ruby Rose is not a good actress I'm here to break hearts she Sorry was amazing it. in Pitch Perfect 3. They were that, not like, amazing. 10 minutes. <laughs> they were not. They were not amazing in Orange is the New Black. They were not amazing in The Meg. Like, they keep getting cast and I don't understand. That's true. But let's move on to the TV shows that we watched this month. Because yes. you said I was going to hate something. So let's talk about the thing I'm going to hate. Um, well, that's one that's coming out. That's, so that's is? not what I watched. It's Riverdale season six with Sabrina is going to be on it. I love Riverdale. CW, while we're on the CW, season six is going to finally have the Sabrina Chilling Adventures of Sabrina crossover with my Riverdale favorites. Which we are, which we, I think we spent about 10 minutes on this last month. Did we? About, oh, yeah. About the fact that you're like, how? can she come back spoiler alert she dies at the end of that one i know i'm still shook but i'm now i'm like more on board and i think because at that time okay so, so in a month's time, time you'll love dear evan hansen okay no, i get it no 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 so at the time riverdale was not doing a good storyline and then it changed the last like three episodes leading up to the finale were super good it was like really like the middle of riverdale okay riverdale's a roller coaster you sign on once you can get past season two, it's like with Glee. You just can't stop. You've invested so much time into it. You got to keep going. So there's times when you're like on a low and you're like, I think I should give this up. And then it like, bam, three episodes in a row that are amazing. And you're like, oh, fuck, I can't quit this show. It's very much like I wish I knew how to quit you with Riverdale. So right now we're on a high because it was like three episodes in a row that were like, perfect. Okay. So I'm excited. Okay, let's talk about the shows that you watched, though, this month. The Masked Singer is being yes. out. I've been right on every single guest so far. There you go. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Canada premiered. I did. I watched the first episode. I'm really excited. I, I'm, a, I'm liking a lot of the girls this year, though. I, I, did you watch it? The first, I've only seen the first episode. This is going to be some breaking news because I got in a Twitter fight with one of the queens on the show. Which one? Which one? Is it Eve? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up right now because oh. I have to read the tweet because my husband and I, we we're like, okay, we hate it season one. We don't know what that was all about, but we're going to give season two a chance, right? We I still... like season one, but season two, I love that moment when Eve was standing in the back crying, like, bitch, you're not even <laughs> up for elimination. And then one of the queens was like, this is like, she's getting her TV right there. That's some acting. I'm like, you know what? Fuck that bitch. Okay. I'm just pulling it up right now. I just want to make sure I get to it. It's so been a excited. while. I, I can't believe so. 
Oh, here it is. Okay. So I said on Twitter, so we watched the first episode of season two of Kansas Drag Race. And I would like to ask that the next week's prize for the winner be Petro points or air mile points. Really a TV package? Because my husband and I looked at each other and went, the source? Who gives a prize of the source TV package? UK and USA have great prizes, which I agree they do have great prizes. I would love a repeat of a badge. I the would UK love... has terrible prizes. They win a television program, a, a five-episode YouTube program. I love it. I think that's I think terrible. that's why I like British TV because you don't win money. You do it for the the actual competition. It's not, oh, I'm winning a $5,000 tip here. I'm winning a $4,000 tip here. It's actual, like, you're winning something. You're not winning money. You're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for the actual, like, publicity. And that's what I like. So. <laughs> I love how they also win drugstore makeup if they win the whole thing. Oh, shoppers drug <laughs> Which my husband and I looked at each other. I'm going to get real hate for this. We said, so isn't that like just walking into Shoppers Drug Mart and getting the free makeup that they try to put on you every time and doing that every day for a year? What's the difference? That did not go over well as well. So you fought um, with Eve. I fought with Eve. She came back and she said, UK has great prizes, my love. They get an emerald pin. I'm like, if you know me, I love pins. Pins are amazing. You can buy the repeater badge. I said, agreed. Kanda needs a pin. Maybe the Northern Light badge, <laughs> right? Sort of a joke because I think pins are better. I would much rather have a $5,000 entertainment system than a, a manual pin, which I then replied, good luck on the show with a thumbs up, which I got hate for. <laughs> From Eve? From people who are backing Eve. <laughs> so there's my claim to fame that I don't, I did not tag her in the tweet. I did not- No, she's any. messy. She is so, like, she's like, oh, I gotta attack somebody because I look bad in this episode. Oh, she's messy period there's my rant for the show there's my rant for rupaul's drag race candor drag race candor because you know rupaul doesn't understand that Kanda exists um uk drag race while we're on drag race uk season three have you been watching so as my fellow listeners will know i took a brief hiatus from rupaul's drag race i tried to stay away from it but my husband watches it, so I have tuned in to RuPaul's Drag Race season three. And this, have you seen this past week's episode? I am, I just finished episode three with Veronica. Oh my God, girl, girl, I girl. Have my, I've been busy. Girl. She's been busy. You need, you, you need to take an hour out of your night tonight and watch RuPaul's Drag Race UK season three, episode five. I have four to watch also. Four then, whatever last week's episode is. Because you know how we talked about the train wreck of Diana the Musical? Oh, I know it's the girl group episode. Okay, maybe right? it's the next episode. No. Oh, the okay. girl group episode's the one that I want that I know is like um, apparently is amazing. Okay, so the episode after that one, so it is actually episode five. So you have two episodes to catch up on, and I need you to text me the moment you watch it because I lived, and I am using that word lightly. I lived. I usually like have pains in my body watching a train wreck but this one i could not look away it was the most magnificent thing i have ever seen in my life the moment i just looked at myself and i went this is what it's all about no matter how bad my life gets this not is, that. this is perfection 
this this is what tv should be about right here, I'm here for episode it. five i would highly highly remember just skip the girls group because nothing happens in that episode they sing a song they try to be bing bang boom and they don't and i will be the judge of that but i mean uk hunt is probably the best song that's ever that's what i mean yeah. show. i just just watch it there oh oh during the episode uh the husband and i were looking at each other and we just where uh, there was a loss of words, which I found right now, a loss of words. Exciting, <sighs> thrilling. Gooped, gag, god, chalked, balked, fucked, mocked, locked, fucked. I think you're just rhyming weird words now. Yep, isn't that how the gays do it? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I watched a lot of TV shows this week. Um, I probably can't tonight because I'm also watching The Voice, which airs tonight. Mm. Ariana Grande is actually a shocking good, shockingly good coach. Shocking, because you know how this household is supposed to feel about her. Yeah. I, I've given up on music shows. Oh, the best singer never wins. Yeah, that too. But that's my issue with it. I watch it up to a certain point and then I go, okay, I'm done. I don't need to watch this show anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I just I, I'm concerned. Anyway, what else do you watch? Um CSI Vegas. I forgot that that came on this month. That sure to find came it. back. For like three episodes, right? There is Six, three episodes two? out. Three or four out right now. But it's like a limited series run. It's not like an actual series series, right? I watched the first episode. I don't know if I like where they're going with it. Uh, okay. I'm sure, I think they're testing it to see if it's going to be picked up and well-received enough to be a full season. If it is a limited series run of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm willing to, I'm, I think I want to wait for it all to be out then if it is just going to be six episodes so I can watch it at once. Because the first episode, I was like, I don't know if I like where this is going. True. Um, shows I was watching, uh, Only Murders in the Building, Steve Martin. I, I keep on talking that. about that. But the season finale aired this month. Uh, it was awesome. I highly recommend that you go out and check it. Um, I'm just going to boycott you for a few seconds. So I'm going to just talk to my Canadian audiences here. Uh, there's two shows that came out, uh, two shows that are that one just came out and one ending. Jan, for those who don't under, uh, don't know that, Jan is Jan Arden, who is a famous Canadian singer. She did uh, Good Mother. Uh, I, I'm blanking on all of her other songs right now, and I don't know why because she is a friend of my husband's or was a friend of my husband before he stopped being a politician. Um, she came out with season three of the her TV show Jan. It is doing well. I enjoy it. She's playing off the lesbian vibe a lot right now, which is awesome. There was a RuPaul reference in last week's episode of Trixie Mattel, where the mother who has dementia is like, "I make me up like a RuPaul figure, like Trixie Mattel." And the gay nice. guy at the the gay guy at the store was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> so there was some shade at Trixie Mattel. And Corner Gas Animated is coming to a close after three seasons of, uh, five seasons of animated shows or four seasons of animated shows that is coming to a close. The season series finale is coming up this month. And I am sad because uh, Corner Gas is one of the most popular shows, if not the pop most popular show outside of Kids in the Hall in Canada. And they did a reboot of it a few years ago with animation and it was well received. CTV has pulled the plug and is coming to a close. So I'm sad. And as a Canadian, I am disappointed. Okay, there's my, there's my two minutes. Okay, what's next? What else do you watch? Uh, Midnight Mass. I think I was talking to you about it. Did you ever get a chance to start it? No. I, okay, this show, oh, nobody wins. There's no winner at the end of this. If you think there is, I don't know how, because there's no winner. Okay. Um, 
they clearly had a really great script and great actors and said, ah, oh, this will be, a, this. nobody will watch this. They said, we have a great script, actors, it's really out there. It's a little more cerebral. No one's gonna watch this, so we're not gonna dump money into this. The old age makeup is awful. It's like high school production makeup. Like let's draw lines on their, on their wrinkle lines so it looks like they have old people wrinkle bad. Like it's so, but the script is so unbelievably good that it's like, yeah, the makeup's bad, the costumes are whatever. Like I just, I've never yeah. wanted to punch a character in the face more than I've wanted to punch Bev in the face, who is this uh, pious Netflix? little shit. Netflix. Okay. Also Netflix, Squid Game. I know you're not a fan. You watched one episode, you didn't even watch, did you even finish the first episode? No, I, I could not do it. I am sorry. Did you even get to the red light, green light part? Yeah, I got to that part and I was like, I, I can't. I love I, it. I hate when TV shows become the new thing because ev it gets so overplayed. Everyone on social media is doing wow. it now. Like, oh, look, if the gays were playing red light, green light, a oh, red light, green light. Like, honestly, for those who are listening to this, I apologize for that duck sound or whatever the hell that was, but that is me doing a gay dance. I don't know what I was doing. I, I don't know like, if that was a gay dance. I'm pretty sure that was just the chicken dance, which that belongs to the heterosexual community, not the homosexual community. Eh, you win some, you lose some. Maybe I'll have to be straight <laughs> for a month. Uh, I, I, I don't get it. I, I hate when shows get overplayed and overhyped because there's that one person who hates it and I'm usually that person and wow. then I get attacked. Whoa. You know, I, I oh, already go whoa. into 90% of the things that I go into watching that I like. I already assume you're going to hate and that if I don't like it, I'm going to assume that you're going to like it because we usually are so polar opposites on like 90% of media. That's true. That's and true. no shade, and it's not shade. It's just, I know going in, I think that you might like Midnight Mass, not for the, because of the script and like just the script. I don't think you're gonna think the acting is breathtaking. I don't think you're gonna think, that the, I mean, there's no way that you could think the makeup is good. It's literally that bad. So but I, I love it. <laughs> you, but I think that you will like, you might, but, I, I think that you will like it just purely from like the script being written because it's such a brilliant, like mo if actors are not ripping those monologues from that out to use in their auditions, I don't know why not because the writing was so good. Yeah. There's one about um, death, brilliant. What's coming up this month for you for movies or TV shows? Anything anything exciting? Because I have one thing that I'm excited for for the month of November. Coming up, well, Riverdale <laughs> comes out. Um, <laughs> I still have yet to watch the new season of You and the new season of Lock and Key. So I will be watching those. Very excited for them both. So you'll have an, we'll have a recap in November. When, about yeah, you'll those. have to wait for that because unfortunately You came out I believe it was this weekend or last weekend and just haven't had time. I am also in a play right now. So 90% of my life is being devoted to being in this play. And I, I can't watch, I can't sit in front of a TV like I enjoy doing, which is sad because I really do love enjoy sitting in front of a television and watching things. My CW shows are getting behind. There is one thing I'm excited for in the month of November when it comes to TV. But, and it started actually this past week weekend are you about to talk about hallmark christmas movies you have no idea how much i'm about to talk about hallmark christmas movies 
anyone who knows me knows that I put up my Christmas on on Halloween. Last year it went up a little bit earlier. It went up on the 14th of October, but this year it is going up on Halloween night. And for those who are about to send me messages about you can't put it up until after Remembrance Day or Veterans Day. I already tried. He doesn't care. I am going to say this. The men and women who fought and died for our freedoms, fought and died for our freedoms to put up our Christmas tree whenever the hell we want it to. If the biggest issue in your life is me putting up a Christmas tree on October 31st, then uh, send me a message and I'll file it in the appropriate location. I will still wear my poppy. I will still go mark on uh, the solemn occasion on November 11th. But please give your head a shake, people. But let's talk about Christmas movies because I'm excited. November 1st is when the Hallmark Channel Women's Network here in Canada, because we don't have the Hallmark Channel, the Women's Network here in Canada, starts playing Hallmark movies from November 1st all the way to December 25th. And my husband, the Jew, goes crazy. (laughs) Because every time he comes downstairs, he starts humming Christmas music and he blames me and he says he's going to hell, which Jews do not believe in because I've been playing uh, Christmas movies and music the entire time. The Glee albums for Christmas come out of the, the, the dusty bins and start getting played in the car for every ride we go on. Now I, I need to rewatch for, Glee. I'm looking forward to Christmas and Candace Burr and DJ Tanner and Stephanie Tanner. I'm looking forward to the stereotypical Hallmark movie of girl who's an executive goes back to her hometown falls Falls in in love love with with the tree man (laughs) falls in love with the tree man decides to stay with tree man because she didn't like christmas but he melted her heart and now she loves christmas again and now they're just happy but last year there's also gay versions of that now they did and they're doing a second one and i'm looking forward to the christmas my husband's gonna make me it's christmas house part two it's the no. Christmas house too. Yeah. No, with the same people. Why? Yeah. Oh no, I'm going to be forced to watch that. My husband um, is going to make me. I'm already aware. Yeah. Also, we had to, there was like four that came out. Yeah. Last year, because there was the Kristen Stewart one with Aubrey Plaza. No, 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 no. They are not Christmas movies. Do not bring in that filthy made. Mary Steenburgen was in it. How do dare not bring you? that? Do not bring that stuff into this podcast because that is not a Hallmark Christmas movie. That's Hallmark not a Hallmark Christmas movie. It's not a Hallmark, but it's still a Christmas movie, and I will nope. still fight because there was only three not. Hallmark ones and one Hulu one. You can still hear. You're just pushing it in, so you hear me better. Victor I'm Garber excited. was in it. I am excited. Ick. Excited. But let's talk about the last thing before we talk about the big last topic that we want to talk about. And that is Adele. Oh. Hello from the other side. Uh, during the month of October, she released her new song. Um, this is where uh, we will disagree immensely on this, and then we will agree on the next topic. I liked Adele. I thought Adele was good. Adele has the thing where she likes to break up with the person right before she releases an album. Taylor Swift does the same thing. Yeah, but that's Taylor Swift. And let's be honest, I've never liked her either at all. No, 25 wasn't a breakup album. 25 was the marriage album. It was still had the breakup songs. Which was Hello. Well, Hello, Hello was just the, the, like, revisiting, like, her old feelings and, like, moving forward, like. Exactly. Ni- the- and 19 was the, um, was the I, My First Love album, because 21 was the My First Love Broke Up With Me. Yeah. So 25 was married. So 30 we, is divorce. We, we do the, we do Adele music by her relationship status, and I am done with it. I'm okay I'm with it. Over it. But now I also need to get divorced because I was married. I had my first heartbreak at 19 or at 21. 
I got married at 25. I now need to get divorced at 30. So uh, my husband has what, two more years? So sorry, John. <laughs> Breaking news, entertainment pundit divorces because of Adele. I mean, that's all, you know what? Don't go on social media because that's the joke right now. I need to find a man to break up with me so that I can listen to Adele's new album. Um, that's the new joke. The Squid Game's gone. So you might like Squid Game now because it's no longer everyone's joking about. Uh, <laughs> I might watch Avatar first. Is that the blue people one? Yeah. Oh, don't. Yeah. Um, Adele is good. She had a, two good songs. One possibly. I just, I, I'm over her. I'm screaming and internally. For those who want to come at me, come at me, send me vile, vile hate messages and we will file it away in the appropriate location. Oh. <laughs> I'm screaming internally so hard. So we had someone come over to the house. So just uh, completely off topic right now. We had someone come over to the house recently uh, to come on the show and they talked about my interview with my entertainment pundit and they like that you attack me so I need to it. attack you more that's what <laughs> there, I'm hearing there you go more vicious <laughs> there you go so you have fans in Canada in the city of Calgary who like god. you thank god go so follow them on I, Instagram so what I'm hearing is I need to attack you more specifically with clueless clothes. Got it. <laughs> I won't get them. So I'll just be like, Oh, sure. oh my God. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Whatever happened to Brittany Murphy, the HBO documentary about Brittany Murphy's very tragic death. I need to put this in my eye because I forgot. I don't know why I just segued that way in my brain, but Oh, she was on clueless. because I have never heard this. I've never seen it. So you, this is your th- two minutes to talk about this because we're coming on the two hour mark, dude. <laughs> oh, yikes. Um, so it's the basically Brittany Murphy died tragically of an overdose. This documentary is in two parts on HBO, an hour each, exploring what happened because she died and it was weird and there was weird things. And then her husband died of the identical same way like seven eight months later after like mommy found out a bunch of weird stuff so what the documentary basically leads you to believe is that simon killed britney and then mommy found out that simon was a liar and a grifter and like played them for a fool and stole all their money and then killed him the same exact way Brilliant move, brilliant, brilliant documentary. If you're a Britney Murphy What's it called? fan, whatever happened to Britney Murphy? Okay. HBO? She's a brilliant, yeah, she's a brilliant actress. She's done some of the best movies, period. She For was those a Hollywood in Canada who want to watch this, they will not be able to watch it. Oh, is it HBO get- Max? I hate, okay, this is also where we need to, where we have to talk about why streaming hates Canada. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, I, I often joke with Michael um, that he needs to start writing letters to Joe Biden. Because yeah, Joe Biden doesn't respond to me. Exactly. Well, for those who are in power listening to this right now, I, I ask you one question. To the streamers, to the Discovery Plus, to the HBO Maxes, to the Paramount, Paramount Plus, Plus, to the people who make decisions where things get streamed. Well, I know we're Canadian. I know we're literally just a hop, skip, and jump from you guys. I know we are the largest trading partner with you. I know we have the largest open uh, border with the America uh, with your country. I know that uh, Canadians apologize a lot. I know that Americans look at us and think maybe Celine Dion, Justin Bieber will come down here. Maybe our basketball players will come down there and play for you. Maybe our national sport hockey will be played and you will win the cup over and over again and Canadians won't. 
maybe your Wait, really? sports team takes our football players and plays a weird game of football with 10 less yards than uh, Canadians. We get that. We understand that you enjoy us. We love to come see Disney World. We love to come see Disneyland. Las Vegas, we love it. Canadians have Niagara Falls. We do have the, I know we got time, but I got to continue this rant. I know we have the better version of Niagara Falls. Yes, correct. Don't hold that against us, though. They do. Release the goddamn fucking shows on the streaming services literally across the road. Y'all fucking don't get Discovery Alaska Plus. Alaska gets it. And they're further away from mainland USA than us. Y'all don't get Discovery Plus? We just got it. And it's the same thing as Paramount Plus. 95% of the shows on Discovery Plus are made in Canada. Yes! And y'all don't get to... That makes no sense. I love the Boston am, family. They're my favorite Canadian family on that, sh- on that channel. I'm sorry, but America streaming giants... Are monsters. They're devils. We hate them. We do. I don't understand why. That's I, yeah. I have no I, power. Un, I understand why. I do truly understand why. But it's not regulated under CanCon. So please let us have evil. Let us have HBO Max. So stop with this hate on for of Canada people. We love you. We are your brothers in arms. We we will give you maple syrup for free for a year if you fucking just give us HBO Max. I don't think you can make that decision for. for I have talked to the Canadian Council and we have come to the conclusion. Breaking news on the Cross Border Interview podcast. Give us some streaming services that actually work in Canada and stop thinking that we're just some second rate citizens of the United States of America. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're not a citizen of the United States of America. <laughs> I'm dead. I said it. I'm, I'm, I said That's, it. Good. I went on that journey with you. Um, I also would like to know who's on this council of Canadians and if it is Celine Dion. It's Celine Dion, Avril Lavigne. It is the guy from Bare Naked Ladies who's no longer there, Stephen Page. Um, and then it's Justin Trudeau. We have um, uh, who, who's, oh, we have um, Fr- Fred Penner. He's on there as well. We have uh, Wanda from the Magic School Bus is on there as well. Um, we make up the Canadian Council and I'm sorry, but we, we need a discussion with the American president, the Canadian Council. <laughs> Joseph, yeah, Joseph will, pe- will pencil you in. Yeah. He doesn't talk to our prime minister, so he, he's got to talk to the Canadian Council. Joseph doesn't talk to Justin? Oh, no. No, 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 no. We'll talk about that after the show. That's drama. Um, last thing I want to talk about. And this is the big one. This is so we excited. Are, we, we usually stick to entertainment, for, but for the last 10 minutes of this episode, we will talk about games entertainment games gaming systems and oh michael's giving me the hurry up look like no i'm so so excited earlier this month in the month of october nintendo came out with their long awaited their much anticipated their eagerly awaited they're open to happiness for every gamer in the world animal crossing update 2.0. 2.0. I'm so excited. I will give the mic over to you, Michael, because you know this a little bit better than I do. I know some details. I don't know all of it like you do. So why should people who have Nintendo Switch be happy about this? It's literally like everything people have been asking for for like months now. Like they, it shows they've been listening. It is a shame that it is the last free update, but there is also a paid update along with it with a whole other slew of content. And 
it's really, it's just so cool. And Animal Crossing is such a great game. It got me through 90% of this pandemic. Like I literally played that game every single day from March 20th, 2020, right up until, um, what was the last day I had internet in LA before I moved out here? June 27th, 28th, something like that. That, no, it was the 28th, yeah. So that was the time, like I played every single day up until that point and then between moving and starting a new job and I haven't like been able to really, really pick it up. And also they haven't really updated anything. So like, this is so exciting. I'm so insanely thrilled to like get to play this update. It's a long time coming. I think I'm really excited for the paid portion because I always enjoyed the happy home designer portion and it's just all designing and it's just going to be a good time. I mean, I don't know, like who doesn't so, want like a fun, feel good game. And that's what Animal Crossing is. So for, this is the worst. This is this. I, I've been asked a few times how I know Michael, how our budding friendship started. And it is because of this game. We started talking when we, I bought the game last year. July and we had known each other for about two weeks and we uh, he helped me a lot through Animal Crossing because it was middle of the lockdown I didn't really have much to do so I wanted to do something and if you remember back in March of last year when this actually dropped there was online chatter that the reason we went into lockdown is because of animal crossing because china wanted animal crossing to do so successfully they spread a virus that killed many people just because they could do animal crossing and get a lot of money listen but animal I'm not crossing lie. is why we have this show right now and we're talking i fully was on board i was like listen i know i needed like some time off when animal crossing came out but i didn't need a whole lockdown but I quite literally, because when the lockdown first started, I'm a social worker by trade. We went into lockdown and like, I didn't have any of my stuff. I was on quarantine. I didn't even get to do like the, you have this to, pre to prep. They were like, no, like you can't leave your house for two weeks because we don't know anything. And you may have been in a meeting. So have fun. So I had no documents. I couldn't like call clients unless they happened to leave me a voicemail and I could answer because I'd get the voicemail through email because I didn't even have a work phone at the time. I literally had to like star six, seven, my own personal phone to like block my number to call. And all I did was play Animal Crossing and it was amazing. And I needed it in my life and I still do. And I need this update. It's coming at the perfect time. So for those who don't know what Animal Crossing is, Animal Crossing is you are a new villager to an island and you have to design your uh, island to look pretty for other people to visit. And then you have little villagers on the island that are animals and they are your friends and you go around, you plant pumpkins you plant trees you travel to other locations you collect photos from people it is a fun game it is a you evict the ugly game. ones <laughs> okay didn't you just say something about a certain uh two certain uh music producers who write and uh write music for tv uh movies that do the exact same thing that you just did the ugly ones they're not ugly. They're unique. Okay. They are. Listen, unique. I love some of the ugly ones, but it is so funny when people are like <laughs> chasing their villagers around trying to evict them. And it's like, y'all are too much. But that's part of it for some people is the eviction portion. <laughs> yeah. So this is a game that Michael and I bonded over and we became good friends because of it. And it is coming out with a new edition and the new edition looks great. For those who, this is not a relatively new game. This has been around since Nintendo GameCube. So this has been around for... N64, baby, Animal World. Oh, I did not know that. So there you go. So it's been around since N64. So this is the newest version of it. Um, the new update gives some players the ability to have playable characters from past uh, editions. So the coffee shop is now going to be open. The new update also brings in summer villages, vacation properties. So you're going to be able to go do that. So people are looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to picking up my Switch, which I, I think I picked up last night and then I dropped because I was like, oh. <laughs> 
but Michael is excited. I'm so excited. Um, we are at the two hour and five minute mark. I want to thank Michael for doing this. This has been yet again, another enlightening two hours of me trying to upload this onto YouTube uh, into one clip. Um, but thank you, Michael. Greatly appreciate Absolutely. it as always. Absolutely. We will be back in, actually tomorrow morning. We'll be back with another great guest and we'll be talking about the biggest political news stories here in Calgary. Um, and then we will be back with Michael in one month's time. And then after that, we'll be back in two weeks time after that for the biggest recap of entertainment news of the year, talking the biggest news stories of the year in entertainment in December before we take a hiatus for a few weeks. Um, with that, my name is Christopher Brown. Please remember to like and subscribe to the show. Follow Michael, his links to his Instagram are in the show notes. And also, if you feel like backing the show, head over to Patreon, which the links in the show note. Give us two, three dollars, whatever you want, and it can help the show continue on. So, with that, from everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your Thursday. See you tomorrow.